Beautiful. This is Hannibal here from the HannibalTV.com. And today we have a WCW, ECW, UWF, the Mid South UWF, uh, World Class Championship Wrestling. He he's done it all, other than WWE. None other than Jack Victory, who is also known by a bunch of other names that we might get into some of them. A lot How of gimmicks, yeah, a lot of gimmicks. Uh, but what, what what is the gimmick that you like the best out of all your gimmicks? Um, boy, that's that's a really good question. Um, which one did I like the best? Um, I, I love wrestling tag teams. Um, I. Me and John Tatum probably probably stands out to be the uh, probably one of the best gimmicks of, um, that that uh, that I liked. Now I know you're from the the New York New Jersey area, and you grew up oh, I'm in losing the seventies um, with Billy I'm Graham also... just passing. Do you have any memories of him? Um, say that one more time. With, with Billy Graham just passing, do you have any memories of him growing up in the New Jersey area oh where he God. was popular? Gr growing up, yes. I mean, he was uh, he was one of the best heels. Um, with me growing up uh, watching uh, WWE uh, back in the day, it was uh, it it was him. Uh, he when you were a kid watching WWE back in the day, he was uh, he was he was the the heel. Did you always want to be a heel? Because it seems like you were a heel most of your career. 99.9% uh, of the time I was a heel and loved every, every second of it. Um, uh, it, it was uh, back in the day when you were a heel, you actually called a match. So you were actually the uh, the the match caller back in the day, and um, it was just an honor. It was when a match went good, um, you always got that praise of uh, of being a heel. So I I enjoyed it. Now I understand that when you got into wrestling, I guess you knew where the original Nature Boy Buddy Rogers lived and you just went and knocked on his door uh could you tell us how you got the guts to do that and what it, his reaction it, it was actually it actually wasn't me it was my dad my dad knew the passion um of of me breaking in the business I, I was doing some independent stuff in uh pennsylvania new jersey area um learning the craft and uh he he just took it upon himself and tracked him down and literally knocked on his door and he says oh bring your son bring your son and uh we spent probably 2 to 3 hours just talking about the business how to get in the business and and when i broke in it was in the 80s so we didn't have we didn't have cell phones there was no cell phones so it was basically vhs tapes um, every time you worked, uh, somebody had a camera and, and videotaped uh, your matches. And, um, and the best advice, which worked, says, uh, send them to everybody. You know, there was probably 15 territories. And um, the person who called me was Bill Dundee, uh, Mid-South Sports. And uh, they flew me in. I did two shows. Uh, it was Houston and I think Shreveport um, on a weekend. Um, Bill Watts, he they ran every day, um, and and two two shows on the weekends. So we we literally ran eight shows a, a, a week when I finally broke in. Um, but anyway, getting back to the uh, breaking in, he uh, Bill called me says come down uh, try out and. It was probably 30 days um, when, from the time I flew back home. I was like, oh, I, they weren't impressed. They didn't like, uh, they didn't like me. And uh, about 30, 30 days later, uh, Bill called me and he goes, this is your starting date. And um, I just packed my stuff and uh, 
hit the road and uh, never looked, uh, never looked back. It was, uh, it was cool. I heard you say in another interview, you started off making like a thousand dollars a week in that territory in the eighties, which is huge. It, it's huge. Right. I mean, uh, a lot of people now uh, would love to make a thousand dollars, but making a grand a week in the eighties is like three grand now. Um, and uh, yeah, it was uh, bill was cheap. Um, you always thought you could make more um, because basically we, we, you know, I made a grand, but I worked eight to eight shows. So, you know, when you put that into perspective, um, per show wasn't that much. Um, but, uh, it was, uh, it was fun. It was, uh, hotels were 25 bucks, <laughs> you know, back in the day. Yeah. And, and you're still just breaking in really. So still breaking in, learning to... the craft. And, uh, it was, it was basically, uh, here's a, here's a grand a week kid. Um, le learn the craft and, um, and go with it. So it was, uh, it was a blessing. So we always hear about Bill Watts being strict and his rules. What were some of his rules in UWF? Oh man. Uh, Grizzly Smith, which is, um, Jake, the snakes, uh, Robert's father, um, was Bill Watts's stooge on the road. He was, uh, he was a good guy. Um, I got along with him uh, huge. So the biggest pet peeve was being late. If you were if you were not 15 minutes early, you were late. Um, and we we had to be at the shows two hours prior to the gates opening. So if if the show was at eight o'clock, we had to be there at six o'clock. And uh, locker rooms were. Heels on one side, baby faces on the other side. So fans never, I mean, it was, it was literally uh, a kayfabe territory where we didn't, we didn't share the locker rooms. We weren't allowed to go to the same restaurants. Um, if, if you walked into a restaurant and saw baby faces, you had to turn around and walk out. Um, that was, that was part of the, uh, part of the fines. Um, but more, more the more fines was being late. Um, that was that was most uh, Buddy Landell. He he was the one that got most of the fines because Grizzly didn't like him, <laughs> you know. But if if Grizzly liked you, he would he would uh, you know if if you were running behind a little bit, it was it was cool. I know at one point Landell was in consideration to be world champion, but but he self admitted that that he had a big uh, cocaine problem. I guess that uh, that affected him. Uh, how did you get along with Buddy, and and did you notice that the partying was pretty hard in that territory at that time? We we never we never went down the same same road together. Um, in that in that territory, it was basically you were by yourself and a car. Um, you literally sometimes you had to literally get in your car completely dressed in your gimmick and drive to the next town to make it uh, to 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 start the next show. While other guys are uh, you know wrestling at the show before you got there, so. We really never um, hung out. We never partied together. We never did anything. Um, Buddy's downfall was he he missed a lot of shows. He missed a couple shows, and that's in this business big no no, very big no no. Yeah, I, I think the same thing happened to to Butch Reed in WWE. It cost him the Intercontinental. Title and I always heard you were very reliable. Yeah, so there's some good advice dude, for wrestlers. Literally, um, if if I from the from from the get go, uh, being born and raised, um, if if you're if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late, and uh, it's it's stuck with me uh, 
to this day. Uh, if, if you tell me to be there at three o'clock, you look for me about two thirty. Really. Now we always hear about the backstage fights and the bar fights from the Mid South Territory. Did you witness any of those while you were there? Oh, I've been I've, I've been in a lot of bar fights. Been in a lot of bar fights. Um, one of the one of the best bar fights was New Orleans. Everything happened to me in New Orleans. I broke my knee in New Orleans, lost seven teeth in New Orleans, and I was in a ton of bar fights in New Orleans. It was it was me, uh, the uh, it was the Freebirds, me, and a couple other dudes. We were at a bar um, after the matches, and um, the marks, you know, you knew around midnight to two o'clock when when the bars closed that they had enough enough in them to where they uh, they wanted to try the boys. I, I, I never understood it, um, but they did. Every time they would try the boys. And uh, this one, this one particular fight, this guy, he didn't, he didn't mouth off. He just walked up to me with a beer mug and smashed it over my head. And uh, I don't know which scar it is, but he busted me open. I mean, I was covered from head to toe. And we... We fought out of that place. It was it was fun. It was fun. And I uh the guy that hit me with the beer mug, I almost killed. I mean, I was pounding him. And um, I remember knocking on Terry Taylor's door and goes, dude, I think I killed this guy back at the bar. And I was covered in blood um from this cheap shot uh uh beer mug uh in, to my face. Were you ever attacked by fans coming out of the ring or coming into the ring as well? Um, you know, back in the day with, with Watts, um, he had that small little railing. And it, it, it's funny, but people used to be able to smoke while they were in the arena back in the day. In the 80s, people were smoking. It did, funny story, we were in uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, and uh, this one, one girl or – one one older chick. Um, I remember it was me, me and Johnny, and uh, he rolled out of the ring, did a spot where he rolled out of the ring, and she was puffing on a cigarette, and she flicked it, and with the sweat, it stuck on Johnny's back, and uh, he did he did this uh, I'm burning up uh, dance around the ring. It, it was the funniest thing. But um, back in the day. We 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 punched a couple uh we we punched a couple marks. Um, nowadays you go to jail, or the marks will will take you down like they did Seth Rollins a couple of years ago. Embarrassing. <laughs> Watts what would have Watts have done. Watts would have fired you. Watts Watts says I I love bar fights, but if you lose, you're fired. So I mean that's that's a that was a that was a blemish on his record. Good guy, good guy, but uh, never let a mark uh, take you down. And I think what was worse than that was the next day him going to the press and saying that that was the most scared that he's been in his life or something along those lines. Mm. Yes. But, uh, whatever. Yeah. It's a I would have said I tripped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I tripped on, uh, you know, and uh, he, he ended up, I mean, I would have said something, but not that. And I understand you were there for the infamous altercation with Dick Slater and, and Sting. What was your reaction to that? I was, I was, I was a young, I was still a young kid back then. Um, I was, uh, never saw it coming. Never, never heard, never heard, uh, the scoop, why it happened. Um, and it, it was in Biloxi, uh, it was, no, it was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And uh, it was, uh, it was, a, it was a, an eye opener. Yeah, I tried to ask Dark Judy about it, but she was so messed up during my interview with her. She, she was like totally out of it and, and didn't even remember. Yeah. Um, 
So she's she's still stuck in that era, I think. Yeah, but I yeah, understand yeah, yeah. Dick Slater was a really tough guy. But, but oh, Dark yeah, Journey he, said, he was someone that you would definitely want to bring down a a dark alley with you uh, as a as a, as a foe, you know, and not a uh, you know. He was uh, he was a he was a mean dude. He uh, he lived up to that reputation. Who would you say was the toughest from UWF? You had Jim Duggan, Matt Bourne. Dick Slater, Terry Gordy, so many of the all-time toughest. Terry Gordy probably stood out in that territory as one of the, one of the badasses. Um, the number one badass in professional wrestling is is Haku, um, and and you could probably ask a hundred uh, wrestlers. From from back in the day, and probably ninety nine percent of them are going to say Haku. Haku, you you would want as your bodyguard. Period. Did you know Haku at all over the years? I knew him. Never uh, when I went to the NWA, he was still around, and um, just uh, just just he was a bad man, and I would not want to fight him. Yeah, I know from, from wrestling him, I've felt his chops, and they're definitely extremely hard. Uh, there's a there's a fan here that says he's a huge fan of you. He loved your work with Hollywood, John Tatum, Rip Morgan, and Carino. Uh, was it your idea to do different masks in WCW, he asks? Um, yeah, we. Uh, I mean, this is one of them here. This is that's one of them right there. We uh, we um, never really liked. I really never really liked working the gimmick. I was telling uh, telling a friend uh, when I when I first came in. Uh, that's how I got to the NWA. Dusty Rhodes was the booker, and he called me. I was in uh, uh, world class still at the time, and he goes, "I I need a Russian assassin number two. Are you interested? And I go, my, I'm packing my bags right now. And um, that's how I broke into the NWA. Uh, uh, they, they brought me in as the Russian assassin number two. And I was a couple of different gimmicks with masks and uh, really never liked them. Got used to them. Um, it paid the bills. Um, so, Yes. Yeah, I, there's a famous clip of Jim Cornette talking about all all your gimmicks. Was it just that you were kind of like first in there and you were almost like a spare guy that was doing anything they had? Or was there another reason? I was just trying to get a paycheck. You know, I was, um, you know, anytime that, I mean, this business is a hard business. Um, nowadays, it's even harder because if, if you're fired now, you're pretty much done. Um, except for the independence. So back in the day, I just felt like um, they like me. I like them. Um, they want to try to uh, do different gimmicks and blah, blah, blah. There, there was a couple of gimmicks that um, they should have really pushed that they didn't push. Um, but it, it kept me working. Exactly. And, and there's not that many wrestling jobs out there. Even back then, there may have been more. But as you me. said, now you're Hold screwed up. if you get heat. You're coming back. Major. Oh, uh, somebody is wondering. Okay. Someone is wondering if you have any Matt Bourne stories. Not really. We uh, we never really went down. We, we wrestled the, in Mid-South uh, together, but never really traveled the roads together. Someone wants to know, do you have a favorite match with the Sheep Herders, who were also known as the Bushwhackers in later yeah, years? Yeah, I mean, I was I was the flag bearer to uh, the Sheep Herders back in the day. And um, I was telling this story earlier today. Um, Bill Watts used to run the Superdome, which was uh, the WrestleMania for uh, Mid-South Sports. You, you know, we had only packed 40,000 people in the place you know, that held 80,000. Um, it was never like a WrestleMania of today um, with 90, 90 plus thousand people. 
but it was Bill Watts's WrestleMania. And um, the Sheep Herders wrestled the Fantastics in uh, in one of the matches. And Tommy Rogers drop kicked Butch in the face and broke his nose. I mean, literally his nose was over on the side of his face. And he rolls out and he goes, Jacko, you got to finish. I mean, you got to fix my nose. And I'm like, oh, hell no, I don't. Uh Uh-uh, I ain't fixing your nose. And he goes, you got to fix my nose. I can't breathe. He goes, just grab it and put it back into place. And I was like, dude, really? So I get him in a headlock and I grab his nose and I pop it back. Pop it back into place and blood starts gushing all over my hand and all that stuff. And um, to this day, I think about that match. Um, Every every time I go to sleep, every time I wake up, I I think about that match. Any thoughts on Butch sadly passing away a couple months ago? Horrible. Horrible. Um, It it, it still blows my mind that... um, he flew all the way over here to uh, to give his fans, you know, one last signing and all that. And it, it just never happened. It's uh, such a great guy. I mean, we went up and down the roads and uh, they they are um, they are characters, man. They are really cool dudes to go up and down the roads with. Yeah, I was in Puerto Rico when Butch was booking there for a while, and I, I spent some time again. with him. He's a great guy. Um, there's a there's a bunch of fans that have been asking about teaming with John Tatum with Missy Hyatt, and and you were right there in the middle of it when she left John in real life for Eddie. What was that like behind the scenes? I'm sure you're traveling with with John. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was tense. It was, you know, you, you can, you can interview Missy Hyatt tomorrow and uh, she'll tell you that that was her biggest mistake of her wrestling career. Um, Johnny took it as best as anybody would take it. Um, they drew money. They drew money. Um, uh, it, it wasn't, it wasn't cool. <laughs> you know, it wasn't cool. Um, in, uh, in, in wrestling business, uh, you know, you, you, you don't, uh, you, you don't, you don't sleep with someone else's, uh, old lady. You know what I mean? No, you don't hit on them either for that matter. But I guess Eddie Gilbert was the booker, right? So there wasn't all that much John could do about it to keep the job or what was the deal there? What's that? Say that one more time. I lost you. Uh, because Eddie Gilbert was the booker, is that why John kind of, I guess, just let it happen and like he couldn't really do no, anything? I, about I, it? You know, I mean, I, I I can't get into John's head. I I don't know. I mean, we talked about it. Um, it, it's it's not like we didn't have any chicks on the road. You know what I'm saying? It was not <laughs> like we were. Uh, you know, uh, it, it wasn't like chicks were throwing stuff at us every night of the week, you know? Um, So I I think, you know, maybe he was done in his heart too, you know? Um, I I know that uh, he, uh, he took it better than I would have. And he made money, they made money together. So God bless him, you know? Yeah, and you you bring up the girls. I I heard there was a lot of them in uh, Mid South. Would that have been the best territory for the groupies uh, of your career? Well, nowadays it's all corporate, so they they don't even know what ring rats are. We we used to call them ring rats. So uh, I, I it's funny. I go to NXT shows and all this, and I go, "What what are y'all doing after the show? Oh, we're going home." Not us. Not back in the day. We never went home. There was no home time. It was wrestling bar, wrestling bar, wrestling bar. I mean, it was, uh, we we had some really interesting uh, girls on the road. 
Yeah, and and I've heard some wrestlers say too that that have been around for a while that now it's all guy fans. Like there's a very small percentage of girl fans. So yes. when you're yeah, at the yeah. bars, it's guys. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It, it's more. It's ninety percent uh, dudes as as fans. Um, but that, that's all because um, I don't know the the. The Fantastics, the uh, um, all them good looking guys. I mean, they're still good looking dudes, but they don't react, they don't interact with the fans anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, back in the day, we, I mean, we up, up close and personal with them. Yeah, and another territory that was really known for the girls, particularly for the Von Ericks, was world class. How was your experience in world class uh, working for Fritz? Well, you know, um, w- when I I got fired from Watts, uh, and I went to world class, he goes, "I'm firing you, but I'm, I'm you're you're starting with world class." I went, "Oh, thanks, Bill." Um, it was it was like it was like a blessing because it was like a it was like time off. When I went to world class, we'd only we only worked probably four or five shows a week instead of the eight shows a week. So um, we got to we got to hang out a lot more and uh, uh, hang out with the boys and all that. And there, there was a bar called Manhattan's in Fort Worth, and literally it was you you couldn't you couldn't reach for your wallet when you went to Manhattan's and uh, they they paid for everything. It was uh, it was it was good times. Um, Dallas girls are very, very nice. Yeah, I've I've wrestled in Dallas, and, and the girls in, in so you Texas know are beautiful. Are you married? No, not anymore. But yeah, I was. Yeah, married. yeah. I, I did that one time, and I was like, yeah, yeah. This, you can't be married in this business. Now, as far as the the Von Ericks, uh, you have any stories about them? Um. You know they were that like like I said uh, I never hung out with them. Um, there was there were stories with Kerry. You know I I knew one one story where he laced his his boots into the leg of a chair and got up and tried to walk and took a face bump. Um, just just goofy stuff like that. But I never never outside of the business never hung out with the Von Ericks. They were always there, you know, Von Eric's over here, the boys over here, you know. Did you hear that they're making, or I think it's finished production, this Hollywood movie about the Von Eric's? I, I, I heard I heard rumblings about that. I didn't know if it was in production now or uh, it's already, it, you said it's already done? Yeah, I think they're done production. I don't know when it's going to come out, but it, it's going to be, be interesting, interesting to see who's, who, who actually... Uh, is the is, is the wrestlers? I, th- I think Zach Efron, who I I don't know him really? that well, but he's a star. He's playing Kevin. Uh, MJF is playing Lance Von Eric. No uh, kidding. I'm not I'm not sure of all of them, but it would be funny if if they end up doing some of those stories about. Kevin. Yeah, yeah. If they if they actually because I I'll look at it and go, oh, that's bullshit, <laughs> or uh, or I'll go, oh yeah, that did, yeah that happened. From what I understand, it's going to be like set in the '80s, and it's going to be a, a movie for for people that are fans of the '80s. So it should be pretty good. Yeah, I, I would. I would like. To, I would. I'm. I'm going to watch it definitely. Maybe you'll be in it. Who knows? Maybe the. Yeah, you never know. You it. never. You never know. I would. Yeah. What a great. I heard yeah, there a great is a, a Bruiser Brody character in it. Did you ever uh, have any interactions with Brody? Mm. I did. I, I wrestled Brody one time, and uh, that man can go. Let me tell you, he can go. And uh, I, I haven't been blown up many a times in my wrestling career, but Brody, he blew me up. And uh, to the fans, it was like when you say blow up, it was, I was sucking wind. And um, he would go, and he would go, and he would – are we going to rest at all? And he – no. So, uh, 
Yeah, I wrestled him uh, one time in in Dallas at the Sportatorium, and uh, he uh, he taught me a valuable lesson to get in the gym. <laughs> Did you ever wrestle the Undertaker at all over the years? Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't he wasn't the Undertaker. He was Mark back in the day, you know. Um, right. Mark Callis uh, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In 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 variety of uh, gimmicks and all that stuff. And uh, to this day, he's 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 a he's a good friend. If I ever need anything, I can always you know rely on him. Um, good dude, really good dude. Now he's a pretty tough guy in real life too, isn't he? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, bouncer slash uh, you know business and yeah. Good, good guy. But Did you, you know, always... humble, humble, you know, never, never look for fights, you know. Well, when you're that big going into a bar in Texas, someone's going to challenge you. It, uh, you. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And, and it was like, you know, it happened all the time. It was the craziest thing. How were the, the free birds to hang out with? You mentioned they were there that night in Louisiana. One, uh, one, one story, um, when I left the world class, they were still there. And, uh, and I was, I, I was coming to the NWA for, uh, to, to, to do the Russian uh, assassin gimmick and, uh, dumb, dumb ass me, uh, told everybody when I was leaving, I had the U-Haul, the whole nine yards, um, I don't know if it was Buddy or or Michael or whatever. Um, they they gave me a going away present uh, in the form of one of them crapped in my wrestling boot and stuck it in my RV um, in my uh, in my truck. And when I drove to a- Atlanta, I didn't I didn't unload my stuff because I didn't have a place to live. I mean, I just went and uh, that. Uh, crap in my boot was safe. Uh, it was like rank after about a week or so until I found a place. And, uh, it was a, a free bird prank. They were always pranksters. Good guys. Always pranksters. Did you know Gino Hernandez is all at all? I did. I was, I was there when he passed. I was, I was in the territory when he passed. Um, the scariest road trip ever was with Gino uh, we rode together in his Porsche, and I swear to God, he, I mean, if he didn't mush the gas pedal to the floor, we we, we were doing a buck 40 on uh, 45 going up to Oklahoma, and, and I was I was like saying, Gino, can you please pull over and, and just let me out? Just let me out. I, I, I'll walk to the, uh, I'll walk to the town, but uh, great guy, great guy. If you're going to ask me what happened to him, I don't know. You know, it, it, it's, I don't know. There, you know. Who would have had, uh, who would have been more popular with the ladies, Gino or Carrie Von Eric? Oh, Gino. Absolutely, Gino. Carrie, uh, like I said, the Von Erics, when, 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 once they got done wrestling, that was it. They were, they were gone. They were disappeared. They didn't really hang out with fans. Um, were they over? They were over like God. They were over like God in, in that territory. I mean, if if you were doing a, a, a show and one of the Von Erichs were on the show, it was a sellout. Plain and simple, sellout. Um, so it was um it was it was it was a good tour territory. Now, I know you worked less in world class. Was the pay similar in world class to UWF? Um, it was it was a couple hundred dollars less because we worked a lot less. Um still made good money. Um we always counted on the um the sportatorium sellout. And then Will Rogers Coliseum on Monday nights sell out. So that was that was your base pay for those two. Um, and then we did a bunch of house shows uh, around. And uh, Fritz Fritz was very fair with uh, with pay. Um, we we did a lot of Texas Stadium shows. We did uh, we did um, 
a lot of shows in um his big show was uh um Texas Stadium. We did a lot of Texas Stadium shows and and he was he was generous. He was uh he was a good payer. So you were there for the first uh, Texas Stadium show. I think that was when David died. What was yeah, the atmosphere? Yeah, that was yeah, that was first. I, I think I was there for five of them. I think, oh wow! Yeah, I think I was there for five Texas Stadium shows. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, I, I actually liked uh, wrestling the Cotton Bowl, which was during the uh, the Texas Fair. Um, huge show. Big show, um, outdoors, uh, in a football stadium, um, I think where the Texas uh, Longhorns play. And um, I, they, were, they were good shows, fun shows. What was the atmosphere like when David passed away amongst the locker room? Um, shock. Um, you know, a lot of people go, oh, there, there goes a – you know, one of them, <laughs> you know, and then, then they just started, you know, going left and right after that, you know, it was, it was crazy. It was a crazy time. Chris Adams was another wild guy from those days. Do you have any stories about him? I mean, uh, he awesome worker. Um, we really never went down the road together. Um, just, just a real. I mean, he respected me. I respected him. He was, he was, a, he's a good dude. Someone is asking about Wild West wrestling. I think you were tag team champions there. Was that uh, yeah, Ken I mean, Mantel's? It was. It was. The, it was almost. Uh, it was almost. Uh, world class was coming to the, coming to an end. Um, Ken Mantell was the booker um, for World Class, was the booker for uh, UWF for uh, Bill Watts. <coughs> he loved me and Johnny. And uh, it, it's always nice to have the booker love you. Um, so he, he, he tried to break it, break a new territory in called Wild West Wrestling. And, um, you know, he, he threw the, the tag teams on us and uh, it. He, he was a great mastermind. It, it just never took off. As far as Gary Hart, what was your opinion of him as a person and as a booker? Gary was a, was a great guy. He was always, um, he was always fair to me. Always, always treated me well. Um, was my manager for a little, uh, for a little run uh, against Brian Adidas and stuff like that. So, great guy there's not you know there there might be one or two guys in this business that i never got along with um and uh so 98 percent of the guys uh you respect each other um you you know what type of business you're in um you and i, I just got along with pretty much everybody Someone on here is asking your thoughts on public enemy passing away. Both of them. Um, I honestly didn't know that. Uh, Ted Petty um, actually broke in the business uh, when I was 18 years old. I might have been 17. He, he, uh, he ran shows in Easton, Pennsylvania. And that's how I actually broke in to the business. I was right out of high school. I think I was 17. And... Um, started running shows, uh, doing different uh, independent shows in the Jersey area, but Easton, Pennsylvania with DC Drake, Eddie Miranda, um, Ted Petty. Um, they brought me in, helped me. Uh, yeah, I was self-taught. I never went to a wrestling school. Um, and um, it, I just, I just, once I went to Watts, it all clicked um, because DiBiase was there. There was so much talent. Uh, working for Watts, that it just uh, it just helped my career just you know pop. And you were rookie of the year for the Wrestling Observer too, so that's even more impressive. Yeah, that was about. yeah, that was. They never gave me a plaque. If if you know, I, I'm still waiting for my freaking plaque. Where's my plaque? 85 rookie of the year. Come on, where's my plaque? 
Rick would like to know if you ever had any interactions with Bud Sawyer. I did. I mean, we 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 uh, we were in this territory together. Um, never never let him get close to me to 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 take money out of my wallet. Or he 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 owed a lot of money to a lot of a lot of wrestlers. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I've heard that, including apparently the Undertaker. Do not, yes, yeah, he uh, he he trained the Undertaker. Um, I think he took his money and uh, never never trained the Undertaker. What was the atmosphere like when you went over to Crockett and the NWA compared to the territories? Well, I was there when. I was there working the Russian assassin gimmick with uh, Crockett's and all that. That was the Crockett uh, era. And then when, when they actually sold out to, um, to TBS, it all went to shit. Excuse my language. It all went to crap. Um, it, Cause it went corporate. Everything. I did sign. It was my first time signing a, a, a contract with guaranteed money. Um, back in the day because back in the day if you didn't wrestle you didn't get paid um so this corporation came in and and they wanted to ink everybody sign contracts sign contracts sign contracts um it, i didn't like it um but stayed working now you became friends, I guess, with Paul Heyman in uh, NWA. I understand he liked you. Yeah, we 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 to this day we get along great. Um, he, uh, I left the business uh, in the uh, in the nineties uh, to get my head right. Uh, Rip Morgan wanted to go back. We were the uh, uh, royal family. We. You know, they they did they weren't pushing us and he was homesick. He was from New Zealand. He wanted to go home. Um I said, okay, well, this is gonna give me opportunity. So I, I left the business for a while, did did a couple of other ventures, and uh and uh ECW was born and they did a pay-per-view in uh in uh in Atlanta. And uh, I, I went to go say hello to the boys and everything, and they they talked me into coming back, and that's how uh, that's how I started back with the uh, ECW. How was working with Dusty Rhodes in ECW? You know, Dusty to me is God um, in the wrestling business. When I was a young kid, um, I, I born and raised in New Jersey, and but I spent my summers in in, in Florida. My, my aunts and uncles, uh, they all moved. They were smart, and they moved to Florida uh, long ago. But I would spend my summers down there in, uh, by the West Palm Beach. And uh, it, the West Palm Beach Auditorium used to have wrestling every Monday night. And uh, so I grew up watching Dusty. And uh, to me, he was, to this day, he's, he's God to me in the business um just incredible and then when i finally got to that point where i was actually wrestling him and taking that elbow it was like it was like uh strike me dead what was he like behind the scenes at that time well i mean he brought me in um he brought me in as the russian assassin so he he actually called me, and uh, and, and I was like, "This ain't Dusty. Uh, it was Dusty." And uh, um, he just treated me treated me great, uh, great dude. I, you know, there was there was there was guys that you know when you get to that upper level booking and all that stuff. Uh, oh, I don't like Dusty, but I love the man. Yeah, and ECW was just a, a payday for him towards the end of his career, so it was probably fun for him. Yeah, it was. Yeah, in, instead of instead of uh, you know relying on it, it was basically like you said. Um, it was like fun. It was it was fun for him. And of course, you feuded with New Jack there too. Of course, he's 
another guy that's passed away, but way too, a, yeah, way too soon. Yeah. Way too soon. Um, great guy. Um, like I told you earlier, I, I really have nothing bad to say about anybody. Uh, he, um, we had some really great matches in ECW, uh, bloody ones. Uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a good time. Were you there when uh, Sunny was in ECW? No, she she left prior to me getting there. What about uh, Smoky Mountain Wrestling? Was she around when you were there? Um, I saw Sunny. Yeah, she was there. She was there. Um, it's a shame. I mean, some sometimes uh, demons get you and 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 hold on to you. And, uh, it's a shame. Yeah. I guess they're, they're doing a dark side of the ring on her and Chris coming up this year. Did you ever get to wrestle Chris? No, I never got to wrestle him. Um, I was, you know, obviously there when Chris was there, um, uh, and he was a heel, I was a heel. So we never really, we never got to wrestle each other, but, uh, he, he was a great guy too, you know, great guy. Uh, but you know, this business, um, it, it's not a, it's not an easy world. It's not an easy world. And, and, and I can see, uh, you know, I wake up hurting every day, go to sleep uh, hurting every day. So I can understand, uh, you know, being reliant on the pain pills and all that stuff. I, I never got into it. Thank God. And, uh, you know, but I, you know, looking back at, at the, at some of my friends that actually got hooked on this stuff, but I, I can understand why, you know, we, uh, you know, you beat the crap out of yourself, you know, your body. Uh, I, uh, like I said, I, I wake up hurting and, and go to sleep hurting. I heard that a lot of the wrestlers that, that died that were like cocaine users and alcohol users, a big factor was the pain pills taking those to come down say that one more time you broke up oh i i heard that like the pain pills are one of the big factors in the wrestlers deaths particularly like if they're taking that to come down off of drugs the mixture right. is what does it yeah i mean i i i was i i never got into that part of 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 the business thank god um but you know uh I, I know I know a lot of a lot of the boys we we lost way too early and it was because of uh you know because of ODs you know yeah I don't know if the, an OD was the reason for Brian Pillman dying but I do know that he was in a lot of pain over the years how were your matches with him I know you you wrestled him in W I lost you again I'm sorry Say, oh who, how were your matches uh, with Brian Pillman in WCW um never never really uh brian right he 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 was a trip he was a good guy good looking guy and, and you talk about women um that man had some women um um good dude good dude somebody wants to know your thoughts on cw anderson i think you wrestled him on C. the very cw anderson is my boy I saw it on your screen. <laughs> I saw yeah. it on the screen. Um, to this day, we're great friends. We play golf every chance we get. Um, unfortunately, I live in Florida. He lives in North Carolina. Um, but uh, I mean, I could call him right now, and he'd pick up the phone if I if I if I needed something. Um, great guy. He's actually coming up here to Canada to wrestle July fifteenth in, in Smith Falls, Ontario, for the company. No kidding. Is that where you're? Is that where you're out of Canada? Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, so. Have you wrestled much up here over the years? Um, we maybe five times. Canada's a trip, man. Um, your hotels are right next to strip clubs. I mean, <laughs> you, you got the craziest. You got the craziest ass. Uh, in Toronto, I tell people this to this day. I'm a big, I'm a, I'm a big hockey fan. So Toronto, um, me and Bill, Bill Wiles, we we said we got to go see the cup. We got to go to the cup. 
And uh, Toronto, you can literally eat off the streets. It is the cleanest city, the big city, cleanest city in the world. And uh, when I when I got to see the Stanley Cup, I was like, it was like, okay, you can take me now, Lord. That is a good story. Who's your team? Uh, the, the Devils. Very, yeah, very well. uh, I'm a I'm a Devils fan. Uh, they they st- I wear 82. They started in 82. Um, you know, which was uh, which is. Uh, a mind blowing, but what a great, they had a great season this year. Um, they're young, young team. Um, they're going to, uh, they're going to be good for the next couple of years. Now for JYD, did you ever get to wrestle him in, uh, I know you wrestled him in WCW, but I don't know about mid South. Mid South. I, I did when I was, when I was a young pup, I, I wrestled, uh, JD, just put him over. It wasn't, uh, it might have been when I first broke in in some uh, TV matches, uh, but it, it it was no it was it wasn't match matches. It was it was putting him over. How were how were the fans towards him? Because we always hear that there was no one more over in that territory. Oh my god, he was yeah, he was like a Von Eric, Von Eric to uh, Bill Watts. You know, um, people don't realize how over the Von Erics were. But um, JYD was he was over in mid south. Um, basically, like I told you before, if a Von Eric was on a show, it was basically a sellout, and um, it was the same way with uh, JYD. It, it was uh, you, you're gonna you're gonna pretty much sell out a, a building if he was on the show. How was Bubba Ray Dudley in ECW? Uh, me and Devon. It, my click in ECW was me, Devon, Sign Guy Dudley, and um, Carino, and CW. It was it was five of us. We'd always get a van. We always uh, pretty much hotels together and all that. And uh, Bubba always went always went his separate ways. So we really never went down the roads together. But um, always always a great guy. Uh, you know. Uh, at, at, as a friend, good guy. Was the ECW locker room as crazy as the stories go? In your opinion, um, I, I don't know what stories it is. Um, we it wasn't really that bad. I mean, uh, compared to Texas in the eighties, how would it have been? It was a it was a lot more interactive um, back in the day. I mean, you pretty much came in, uh, uh, said hello to everybody, went and got dressed and got ready to wrestle. Where you know to go coming up ten more years to ECW, it was more um, a little bit more laid back and 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 a lot crazier. Than, than back in the day dressing rooms. Yeah, because Mustafa was telling me, for instance, he he'd show up off. He was he was functional on stuff, but he said he would show up on stuff, but then he'd get in the dressing room and he'd be offered more stuff. So he, he said it was fun. <laughs> uh, that's that's funny. Uh, another guy that that I like is Sandman. I thought he's a great guy. Uh, do you have any stories about him? He he was at this uh, wrestling convention uh, today. Um, just just a uh, he was over, dude. You just don't realize drinking beer, going out to that music, how over he was. Not not the best, uh, you know, uh, Ricky Steamboat, Ric Flair uh, working dude, but over. Um, and you know, literally could could work that music for 15 minutes and you'd be like, good God, is he ever going to get in the ring? You know, but uh great, great gimmick, great work, you know, um, knew how to work the gimmick, the music. Do you think Steve Austin took anything from Sandman's gimmick from seeing it when he was in ECW? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, uh, you know, I mean, I, I think there's a couple of guys, that are doing the beer gimmick now, right? Uh, in different territories. Yeah. Um, 
I, I think maybe, maybe, uh, I, I'm sure it was probably, uh, probably, uh, probably stolen a little bit. Yeah. John wants to know how would you compare ECW Arena to the Sportatorium? You're lucky to wrestle in both. I, yeah, I was lucky to wrestle in both. The Sportatorium was the was the bomb. You know, it literally when you walked into the Sportatorium, it was built down. It was built down. So you walked in level and the arena was built down like it it was it was an amazing atmosphere. A sellout Every Friday night. I mean, it was literally wrestling, sportatorium, Dallas, Friday nights. Every every week, sellout. Um, the ECW arena, it was a sellout every time we went there also. Um, and those people were crazy. They, they, those Philadelphia crazy people. Um where the sportatorium, we we had law law and order. Uh, where the ECW arena is like, you better watch your back. And someone wants to know: Is Shane Douglas always the smartest guy in the room, even when he isn't in the room? Any memories of Shane Douglas? Oh, Shane Douglas, uh, super super intelligent, smart guy, teacher. That's a shoot. Um, the man was a teacher. I mean, he was, uh, he, he's a smart dude. Uh, the promos, uh, I got to wrestle him, uh, with Rip Morgan, uh, when he was the, uh, the dudes with, um, uh, dynamic dudes, dynamic dudes back in the day. Uh, oh, with uh, Johnny Ace, Johnny Ace. Yeah. Yeah. Johnny yeah. Ace. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, uh, they, they were great guys to work against. How was your relationship with with Johnny Ace over the years? He obviously became uh, very powerful. Corporate. He was yeah. corporate. Yeah. No, I, I, I've I've gone to uh, many of uh, WWE shows, uh, and uh, and and he to this day we uh, we we're still great friends. Someone wants to know if Paul Heyman ever stiffed you on pay. Um, the, fr the first, I mean, the last two weeks were shape. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think it was on purpose of everybody was stiffed. It was, we were, we were done. So there was no money. Um, did you have much interaction with Ric Flair and WCW? Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. He was, I mean, Rick was never, a prima donna, which he could have been. He could have been, you know, I want my own dressing room. I want to do this. I want to do that. Um, he, he was never that guy. He was, he was always there for advice. Uh, you know, top five wrestler of all times. I mean, and I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll call bullshit if, if, if no one agrees with me. He, he's top five uh, workers um, of all time. I guess, was he technically the head booker at one point when you were there, but it was a committee that ran everything? It, yeah. You know, I, I think that's how they got around. They got around him being the booker is it was like a committee, which I really think there was a committee. Um, uh to me, I, I think that was the better way to book, you know, uh, in a committee with ideas and all that. And that's what they do nowadays. I mean, it's uh, the writers, uh, they they all shoot ideas uh, among each other and, uh, and, you know, throw it against the wall and see what sticks. Yeah, there's just a lot more of them and a lot of them don't have experience mm. in the business, but whatever. Yeah, they, they never took a bump in their lives and uh, they're writing scripts. Uh, it's uh, it's painful. It, it, it really is painful to watch nowadays. As far as Sting, you knew him in Bill Watts' territory and I'm sure you knew him Blade, in the Blade Runners. Yeah. He, he came in with, uh, you know. Oh, you were the there for the Warrior? Warrior? Yeah, yeah, I was there. Yeah, they, oh, uh, wow. yeah, they, uh, green, green is green. 
my partner, uh, <coughs> Angel of Death, which was the Russian assassin, number one, they were trained in the same school out in California. And uh, um, great guys. They, they, I mean, look look at what Sting did. I mean, I mean, he, uh, amazing career, ultimate warrior, amazing career. So, you know, you don't have to be the wrestler to, uh, to have, uh, you know, an amazing career. So you worked with them when they were the Blade Runners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how was that with oh how, God, it, was how horrible. it was horrible it was they were so so effing green um but i mean everybody has to learn everybody has to learn in the business uh now now there's schools and and stuff like that and and you know schools don't teach you everything you know it's uh it, you 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 gotta you gotta get in there and work a match you know now, there's always the – Bill Watts tells the story that he kind of backed the warrior down in a confrontation, and the warrior kind of denies it, and I kind of believe the warrior on that. But, like, did you ever remember any type of altercation? No, I never, never – no, I never remembered or any heard of anything like that. As far as uh, the Steiner brothers, did you ever work with them? Not against them. Um Ran up and down the roads with them. Um, super, uh, both 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 the signers. I mean, could could kick the crap out of you uh, like that. Um, um, great, uh, great gimmick. Great guys. Uh, great workers. Stiff, stiff. Um, thank God I was a heel. <laughs> um, and, and really never, uh, never really had to, uh, to go against them. Who was your stiffest opponent over the years? Brody. Okay. And, and one man gang, one man gang. He did that on I mean, one man gang would club the F out of you. I mean, when he brought that, when he brought one of them arms down, you, uh, you knew, and he would just laugh about it. Um, and uh, and I didn't laugh about it at all. I was just like calling him, you know, you dirty bastard, you. <laughs> he seems like a really nice guy, though. Oh my god, the nicest, the nicest man in the world. But he did it. He did it on purpose because it, he was wrestling me, and uh, and uh, he 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 would just laugh and go, hey, "How was that, Jack?" I was like, "You bastard," you know. Were you in WCW when Bill Watts came in? Uh oh! Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Look at this! <laughs> the captain's making the moves. captain's here. We got ring worn, movie worn gear. Ernest the Cat Miller. We're dealing with Hollywood <laughs> Hannibal right now. Okay, oh, something you wouldn't know about. Okay, what's with the man bun? He's what? talking crap. He's oh, talking crap. You you don't worry about the man bun. That's that's the man bun <laughs> of the people. Okay, and you know what? You need to worry about Hannibal. You need to worry about having a good night. What? Oh, 